in today's episode, let's have a tour of a professional audio bag. This is a relatively small one. This is kind of a less formal episode than we have had in the past. So I didn't have a lot of time this week, but I did want to do a little something that you may find helpful for those of you that haven't used um, something like this before. My audio bag here serves a couple of different purposes for me. Number one, for general transport. So for example, when I'm getting to a gig, this is a convenient way to carry all of the different gear. But also when I am mixing on location and I am operating the boom pole and doing the recording and the mixing, I need something where I can carry it with me, of course. And that's the second purpose that the bag serves. A couple of things that I want to run through first. This is being recorded here with the Sound Devices 633 through the uh, Audio Limited A10 wireless system. I'm using a DPA 4160 lavalier microphone. Let's kind of run through things. First of all, the bag itself. This is an Orca bag, an OR30. This bag is designed for mixers this size, so the 633 from Sound Devices or the Zaxcom Max, really kind of a similar thing on the Zaxcom side. The Pretty much the size is optimized for this bag. And there are a couple of things I like about this bag. First of all, you can see this aluminum framing here. So it's a very stiff bag. Um, so it's, it holds up very nicely, it keeps its shape. Some people like softer bags. Um, bags are very personal. <laughs> different people have different preferences. This just happens to be my preference and what I'm working with. I'm not here to suggest that everyone needs to use a similar setup, but this let me kind of just kind of point out what I like about this bag and what I have not liked as much. Use that information, hopefully it's helpful for you. Some of the nice things about the bag is that you can access the mixer from pretty much every side of the bag. So you can open up each panel and access both the sides, the bottom, the top, and the bottom of the bag as well. So it's not super easy to get in this way, but it can be done. Now, when you're actually out there recording, there are smaller pockets on the sides here for routing cables in and out. They have a very nice zipper system, which has, you can zip uh, up and down both ways. There are actually four zippers per uh, opening here. And so that makes it very easy to access things and get in, route your cables in and out this way. The Velcro flaps you see here are for the rain cover. So if you are operating out in the rain or other wet conditions, you have a way to kind of control what falls into the bag, <laughs> but you still have access on the sides to get in and control the mixer and the other gear as well. One thing I like about the bags here is they have these plastic clips here that also hold, they have uh, nylon straps that attach here, holds the mixer in place. So there have been, there was one occasion where I actually, um, it was when we were loading out, someone grabbed my bag to try and help out and the bag tipped over and kind of went flying. <laughs> Fortunately, my mixer was fine because these retaining straps here held it in. So that is a nice feature as well. I am using this battery distribution system now. So the idea here is that with a single battery, and in this case we are using what is called, it's a high Q style of battery. In this particular case, it's an inspired energy. It's a 98 watt hour battery. And the idea here is that from a single battery, I can power everything in the bag. So that powers the recorder mixer, as well as the wireless receiver. If I had more wireless receivers, it would also power those. This is Remote Audio's BDS V4. The way this works is I run the battery in via this cable here, it is a locking cable. And then we also have locking cables here that run the power out to the mixer and to the wireless. A couple of other features, you can tell this what type of battery you're using, what battery technology, whether it's lithium ion, lead acid, nickel metal hydride, and that then uses the color of the switch here to indicate the status of the battery. Now that's not super detailed, of course. Um, and in my case, that doesn't need to be. I have a readout here of the battery status. So right now I have four out of five segments remaining. So we're in pretty good shape there. In addition to that, there is also this switched versus unswitched. So one of the output ports, you can detach it from the switch. That is to say, when you turn the switch off, that port still gets power. And I have my mixer hooked up to that. So for example, at lunchtime, I don't need to be running the wireless, but I want to keep my mixer on to retain the time code. So that's the battery distribution system. It also has some other features built in where it prevents overloads and things of that nature. And the way it's designed, it's very difficult to ac accidentally short anything. So it does a very nice job in my testing so far. This is actually a relatively new addition for me. A little bit more about the battery system here. Again, this is called a high Q battery. It's a style of battery. And the way it works is you have this little receiver cup on the side, it has its contacts here, as you can see. The, I, I really like this battery system. Um, the size and the weight 
is pretty ideal for putting in a mixing bag. Um, the HiQ has some kind of intelligence features built in, so it can keep track of how many charge cycles it's had and things of that nature. And so that if you get a high quality charger that does all those things with all those features, you can keep good track of where you're at in terms of the number of charge cycles. So you uh, have a better idea of when it's time to switch out the batteries. The only thing I don't like about this system, and the same was true really of the NP1 style batteries, which were, I think a lot of sound mixers are still using and were kind of the predecessor to this, um, is that the receiver cup doesn't have anything that locks it on there. It has this rubber that kind of clamps onto the battery a little bit, but there, there is a chance that you can pull out of it. So that's the only thing I don't love about this battery system. It'd be really great if we had something that actually locked. Next up, we have the A10 wireless system from Audio Limited. This is a dual channel system. Right now I have just one channel on because I'm only recording with a single microphone. And this is held in place by the bag. There's this sort of um, stretchy nylon type of strap behind here that holds it in place. There's another one here. And so I could have four channels of of these in here pretty easily. We also have a couple of pockets on the outside for either receivers or transmitters. In the case of the A10, they're probably a little big. You could probably put them in here, but they're a little on the big side. This is more for things like the Sennheiser G3, G4. Or what I often do is actually put my transmitters in here when I'm transmitting the, the bag. I generally only shoot with two lav channels for most of the jobs I do. So I'll have a boom and two lavs, and this is gonna carry me on most of those situations. The handles here are removable. I generally leave them on and just kind of move them out of the way when I'm mixing. There are these Velcro straps here, so you can actually strap in your boom pole when you're transporting if you want to do that. Pocket up front here, I try to keep this pocket not too loaded down. <laughs> My philosophy for a sound bag is that during the mixing day, you only want to carry what you have to carry and nothing more. And I will typically have a separate go bag that will have all of the other stuff in it that I don't actually need while I'm mixing but that I can access if I need to. So for example, my lavalier mounting kit, I won't put the whole thing in here. That's actually gonna stay in the go bag, but I'll put a couple things. So for example, here I have some stickies that I can pull out if I run myself into a situation where I need to go and kind of reposition a lavalier mic or something like that. I've got a couple of um, adapter cables and, and other things of that nature in here as well. So I try to keep it pretty light. So I'm carrying this bag all day long. I don't wanna be in a position where I'm really uncomfortable Generally, at least for me, my enthusiasm for the shoot will wane if I, if I get really uncomfortable. <laughs> so I just try to keep myself as comfortable as possible. I might also put an energy bar in there just so that uh, you know I can keep myself going if we don't have a lot of time between takes. Another thing I like about the Orca bags is the Orca harness, and we'll give you a close-up shot of that. The harness is really nice. It's a vest, essentially. It has a foam material that has holes in it, so it breathes, and it has a mesh around that. So the thing is, is that if you use a vest all the time and you get out there and it gets it's hot in a lot of cases and so you get really sweaty and the nice thing about this design is that it doesn't hold on to that smell too well and in fact the bag that it comes in as well also has a mesh on the side so it can air out in between production days some really clever design there where these these guys have actually evidently done some actual production work so they know what it's all about you have these clips here that connect to the d-rings here on the bag and then the other clips um, connect up here. So the weight of the bag is really distributed uh, across your shoulders and your waist, and it's a very, very comfortable fit. So I've been really happy with that aspect of things as well. So overall, that's a look at my audio bag. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that, and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.